here's another um, glimpse into my ungodly life. And uh, in my last video, I let you know I had my heart stomped on again and my worth diminished by someone else um, that I thought cared about me at one point. But it is definitely like good to know the truth. I would rather be slapped with the truth than kissed with a lie. And obviously I was kissed with some lies um, and manipulated for someone else's um, ego and um, agendas, which has happened a lot <laughs> out here on the road and it happened a lot uh, in my in my life before I've seriously seriously been hurt by men in my life uh, and that started with my daddy um, uh, my value is anything other than a worker which uh, <laughs> like I've worked harder than most men have, I can assure you, are in ways that like, benefit society and caring for children, caring for the elderly, caring for the disabled and the sick and the broken. And, uh, yeah, that's just, it's, it's not work that has garnered me a lot in the way of financial um, means, but, like, in my heart um, and uh, in the spiritual realm you know if what that book says is true it's the most valuable work um, and yeah capitalism um, <laughs> if we don't have the uh, permission so to speak, we are demonized if we follow our own creative pursuits or our own uh, callings, including the one from spirit and the way that they're issued. Not to just go sit in a church pew, um, but called to go follow and develop a personal relationship through the journey of following. Um, and uh, I said I was going to do rituals, which, boy, I bet some people really think that's something demonic or satanic or whatever, so <laughs> um, bring some clarity to what those rituals are. First off, I went and wept. I, I laid there and wept, and I prayed for all that does not serve me and serve love to be removed from my life and me to have the ability to let it go not grasp onto it or attempt to hold on to it out of fear of financial insolvency or <laughs> bankruptcy I've been financially bankrupt when I was working my butt off for that slave system um, but, so I mean, bankruptcy can come even to those that think they're financially secure, right? It happened to my dad. I wonder if he attributes it to he wasn't working hard enough. Or if it was just the way the system was jacked. Um... I know that, I know that not having money doesn't mean that God's ticked off at you, you know, in that, in that book, it, it says that God shines on the just and the unjust, um, the sun shines on them, rain falls on them, um, it's not a indication of your worth in God's eyes, in fact, 
perhaps some of that is a test for them, um, a curse for them in a way, because it says that it's harder for a rich man to get through the gates as your kingdom of God is inside um, than it is for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. And uh, it does seem to be harder to reach their hearts than it is to reach the hearts of the broken. Yes. The broken were already broken. And <sighs> we're ready. And that book says that that's who Jesus loves. God hears the morning. That's why one of my rituals is to go shed those tears. Um, not a single tear or been in vain is the message that keeps coming to me um, in numerous ways. God works in mysterious ways and speaks to us sometimes through ways that don't make sense to your head but you can feel it in your heart and um, I've sure been true in my case if I'd have gone with what my head said because my head wants to convince me that it knows best and that doesn't make any sense then my head has been seriously programmed by the world a society that um, loves money, loves money more than people, um, the structure of it, the systems of it, and I don't think that's changed. I mean, it's changed faces, uh, appearances, but it's, um, it's not really changed. It's changed form. But, um, and then my next part of my process is uh, rituals, right? I prayed, I cried, I talked to spirit a bit, and where I do that best is outside. So I got up and I went outside and I've got a group of women that, um, some friends, some met in person, some not. Um, but one of those is a woman that lives in Ireland. Uh, my friend Esther. That's how you say her name in English. Otherwise, it's really hard to pronounce. Um, and she only has three and a half hours of daylight a day. And so... We've been taking pictures of light to send to her. She's being a big light um, for us in sharing her wisdom and uh, in such a beautiful way, this absolutely beautiful way that um, has me feeling more whole. Just able to move through my grief in a more graceful and dignified way. I'm gonna go turn these, uh, put the potatoes in the water. Uh, my dinner yesterday, she was like, oh, it's a good Irish girl. I've got to wonder where your potatoes are. You know, I absolutely love potatoes. Uh, I was bit too busy or whatever impatient last night to make the potatoes even though I bought some um, so I um, I will drop these in and then go back because that's one of the rituals is self care uh, make sure I'm caring for myself not just wallowing. Sitting with your things consciously is different than 
wallowing. And um, at this point, like, I've wallowed in that <laughs> with stuff. Um, um, you have to, you know, do both. Both and um, self-care shows I value myself. And, you know, my part in all that was I didn't value myself enough to ask for clear contracts before I got there. I attempted to, best as I could, but I was afraid of staying in the cold, too. And that woman was dangerous, too, because later she attacked me also. In fact, they did it on the same day that last time. So, um, yeah, the keys in the pod there. And, uh, because that's where I went back to after I, when I left the Azores. And she physically assaulted me. Got extremely verbally assaulted. And had I not had those funds, it probably would have been a very dangerous situation. Luckily, I was, uh, blessed with some assistance to get out and I had those funds um, and I was so grateful for them but I had to get them I had stood up and stood in integrity like I said I did not empty his bank account um, and I thought like or he let he let me believe uh, when I left that he was giving me that and uh, because he valued what I brought into his life, not as some charity, just build his ego. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I just really like. <laughs> I live and move in this world for good and and for something new to be available um, to my grandchildren, which he doesn't have children, so maybe that's the maybe that's a big difference that he doesn't feel this call for the future generations um, the way I do. And he's definitely hung up on his own uh, intellectual superiority and um, he values himself a whole lot in one way and doesn't in another. Um, but his image that he puts forth is that he values himself so much. Um, and he is really good at taking care of himself, cooking himself food, uh, sort of, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And he's very lonely. Very lonely. And has to stay that way to maintain that image. Like, keep his distance and avoidant uh, behavior. Um, I don't know exactly. I'm making some educated guesses at this point because I did spend a great deal of time over there, but. It seems that most everything I experienced was a lie. And those are uh, narcissistic um, behaviors that he displayed. Um, uh, I, he's dangerous. He's dangerous. I think I'm very lucky to have escaped with my life. And um, I definitely don't want any more of that in my future. I have experienced a great deal of that kind of stuff. Um, I, uh, maybe just show it to me so that I can see it clearly. Um, uh, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So, I'm, um, this is mint. Oh, it smells so good. I just love places that have lots of uh, different colors. That uh, is very good for my artwork. And uh, that's my main thing. Like, I, 
I'm an artist and and I I want to be like I'm an artist. I I'm finally like able to say that uh, I'm an artist. I think I had a hard time with that because like it wasn't valued. Um, my mom had lots of creative um, gifts and interest and stuff until she kind of gave up on life. And my dad was trying to give those back to her at the end there. Um, and I think he was able to see how much not having that had actually taken away the spark of life from my mom. I wish he could see that I'm continuing, like, she's given me this, like, this is, this is my mom when I'm doing this. Uh, I don't know, he now call he, does he, did he love her? Did he really love her? Um, he loved what she did for him more. I don't know. It really hurt, and I understand everybody has their own ways of, you know, dealing with grief, but boy, did it really smart, hurt, it, it to me, it decreased the, the value of my mother, um, for him to clean her stuff out of the house the morning after she died, like she hadn't even been dead. 24 hours and I got a phone call that he was moving her stuff out. I was still in, sh sh I was in shock. And I didn't react the best to that. I, I, I was concerned with him and him grieving well. I legit was afraid that my dad was gonna kill himself and or try to go with her when she died and he shoved us out of the house. like. Um, I do understand how hard grief can be, and so like I've I've held everybody in this place of forgiveness um, for acting out of shock and and not in the best. And, um, it doesn't seem like that's returned so much, and there are things that would do well to have an apology. Um, the main thing I want an apology for is having been shut out as her mother and judged as being ungodly as the reason for that. When, like I'd been telling them, I had been telling them, obviously, I, I thought again, right? Like they were, dad was interacting with me. Um, and I knew my my daughter still held this something about that I'm satanic or something. Um, but I didn't realize that my dad was still agreeing with that. And uh, so I was I was kind of blindsided by all of that, and I still did my best to stay focused and. My response when they told me that Amy got down on her knees and accepted Jesus as her personal savior was to say, good, good. I mean, she needed a shift in some way. Um, and I thought, well, you know, if they feel that way, then they might actually support her. And I knew she needed financial support that I wasn't able to provide. Um, And so I had hoped that they would do that for her and that she could maybe experience what I hadn't gotten. And that was acceptance and approval and support from my family. Um, when I heard about my dad going into business with my son, I didn't get jealous or envious, like any of that. Um, that's projected onto me. That's somebody else's stuff. Um, here we gather some more supplies. This is getting bigger. 
<sighs> what, I, what I was gonna do. <laughs> I still have this one on the floor. <laughs> uh, clean that all up at some point. Uh, this stove is very different. I did get that pot cleaned up. Um, I'm gonna go grab a couple more vines. Look at the sun. The sun is so uh, bright and shining today. I'm soaking that up. Uh, soaking up some sun and I'm gonna go jump on the trampoline again. <laughs> to, uh, to shift some of these internals. The, the feels on the inside. Um, as some of the tough part that you feel it. I can feel that knife in my back. Oh, look at there. I love the way the sun does that. Those rays of sunlight that have rainbows in them. And, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I feel that knife in my back big time. Big time. And they tell me I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy of a like just basic human decency to be listened to, <laughs> uh, to be treated with dignity, um, a bit of self determination. You know, my dad and Seth were both really, so far, blessed to, for the most part, be able to take care of themselves. But, uh, you know, when people get old, um, they wind up not being able to a lot of the time. They live longer than their body holds out, and they... Just like when they were babies, are dependent on someone else. And, um, lots of elders are abused um, by their children because the children are angry with them. So, um, and so many think, oh, okay. Um, I won't be a burden. That's something that my dad brings out. I won't be a burden to you. Uh, I know how crappy um, nursing homes are. Uh, that system, I would much rather be at home with my children, provided that we've healed our relationship, which is you know, one of the reasons tending those relationships as we age is important and I think when we lived where we were reliant on our families to do that and that was the plan and like I I lived until probably in, in my 40s I realized 30s when my dad fell and broke his shoulder I realized that right before then I showed up at the house and I got told that Every, things were being left to my sister and my brother. Um, and that I wasn't going to be the one to care for them. <laughs> that, uh, whoa. And like usual with my family, I kind of accepted that as valid, considering I had gotten pregnant and I didn't live the way they did. I didn't go to church. Uh, I was too busy working most of the time to go to church. <laughs> I was working nights, weekends, holidays. I was working 16 hours a day many times. And then for part of that, I also ran an online business. And I, uh, I didn't have much uh, time or room as most of my life being a single mom, uh, to go to church. And those churches, you know, Jesus hang out with people that most churches would have in their churches. When you've been, you know, 
told your whole life that you don't fit in. I would have had to buy clothes, which I didn't have a whole lot of money to do. I've never been much of a shopper or whatever. I had mostly scrubs for most of my life. And, uh, yeah, I just had this, I had this thing and, um, it's a valid thing. And like, I mean, my parents don't accept, didn't really accept me. They didn't, uh, the nose just turned up. I felt out of place in churches. I didn't feel welcome there. And why would I go out of my way to go somewhere that didn't treat me well? I got enough of that elsewhere um, in the world. I've been a single mom, a teenage mom, an ex-drug addict, uh, in recovery, you know, most, they say they're a place for the broken and the sick, but being sick and broken there most of the time just means to them, you're not doing Jesus right. You know, you didn't take those two scriptures and, and talk to him just right or use the exact right language or something. So, like, it's your fault if their system doesn't work. It couldn't possibly be the system um, for really broken people. That's, I see people with inherent value, regardless, regardless, inherent value, dignity. That's what Jesus did. I, I seriously like this. I, know, I guess I listened more than they did. I don't know. I mean, I believe more than they do. Like I'm willing to put my life on the line. That's what it says to me when I read the book, right? Well, I doubt many people are uh, probably say, just uh, like, forget about it. I tried that. I've tried that. I've tried that. I've, I tried to walk away from the whole Jesus thing too. He keeps coming back up and he keeps showing, stand up. Enough is enough. Stand up for Jesus. Like, Go on and admit, yeah, I love Jesus. <laughs> and actually, like, with the way that Jesus is done by so many, especially Americans. Like, I've been, like I said, I've realized not everybody does Jesus the same way. And not all religions are as closed-minded and dogmatically ridiculous that some versions of Christianity do include mystical traditions and and um, contemplative practices and and there's there's ones that are very focused on the Holy Spirit um, in ways that are about caring for people and egalitarianism the, the cult of the Holy Spirit and the Azores was actually beautiful and the way that they operate in community, caring for each other, that was attractive, right? Attraction, not promotion. And uh, all I've had in American churches is this promotion, that evangelical, which is supporting the, the killing of innocence and, and uh, pushing forth this sick, apocalyptic revelation thing um, it isn't shared around the world, y'all. It isn't shared around the world. Um, but I keep giving, being driven deeper into and wider into exploring, not holding on to concepts that, um, and, and going hold them in my hands and walking them out with my feet, holding them to my heart, not my head, not in some legalistic, I know everything way, or that 
know, there's only one way to do something. I mean, in all of the time since Jesus has been a part of all this, how many different denominations, varieties, many of them come out later to be very twisted cults. I do not benefit people. Hurt a lot of people. You know, I'm wary of that kind of stuff. Uh, more than I am offending God. Uh, God knows my heart. <laughs> God knows my heart. And uh, if I'm sincere in my, in my seeking, and like I said, God to me is love. This all-encompassing, ineffable, uh, creator it created me to do this is what I'm doing and I work to have a personal relationship and I have that I have that stronger than I wouldn't be here if I didn't have that I don't think um, I know I wouldn't be here if I hadn't made that my priority My potatoes are ready. So this heathen <laughs> false teacher. Well, there, there isn't a clause in that Bible, I don't think, that says you don't have to honor your mother. It says honor your mother. Then follow Jesus. You gotta be doing that and not either or. It's that and. The fruits of your, of the spirit would have you honoring your mother. And uh, I did a good job of that one and I still am because I'm, I'm bringing some of the best parts of my mom. Food. Serving people with food, sharing my love with food, art, beauty, watching and sitting for birds. One of these days, sewing. And if I'm given enough of them, I'm given opportunity. I'd love to honor my grandmother that way too, to sew. That was a sore spot sewing machine <laughs> so many sore spots uh, my heart is healing regardless whether they what they think how they feel about me. All I can do is my part. Outcome is not up to me. If it was up to me, this wouldn't have ever happened. If it were up to me, we'd have been praying around my mom. We'd have been together as a family with that. And we'd have sat with her for three days. We sat together for three days. We... Those little wakes where people got to grieve. This was just like, move on. Had, we'd have been together and I'd have been able to hold my grandchildren around me. My family around me. When my baby died. Instead of rushing to have some memorial while she was still in another funeral home, not even cremated yet. Mm -hmm. Those things are really hard to forgive. Really hard. I 
And right now, I can't. They haven't even asked for forgiveness. And if I forgave that right now, I'm ready to draw more of that kind of behavior into my life and trauma informed um, therapy says I don't need to not right now and God you know God's got a according to that book has a temper too and doesn't like unrighteousness and hates hates nasty and that was nasty that was nasty and it was done in Jesus' name definitely not his nature it was done because I wasn't seen as worthy because I didn't do Jesus the way that they did which most of them didn't even talk to me nobody's really sat down to talk to me and ask me without some accusation like coming at me that 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 I'm lying not with curiosity. They haven't come to me with curiosity. Open-mindedness. With love in their hearts. And to an eye for reconciliation. And stopping scapegoating me. That whole family seems to depend upon me being scapegoated. Jesus was a scapegoat. A sacrificial lamb. I guess I'm the sacrificial lamb of mine. Aunt Millie used to say, every family got a dog, man. Every family got a dog. I was the dog of mine, and you the dog of yours. And they love to kick the dog. I'm loyal. I'm loyal. Caretaking. That's not valued in a capitalistic love of money. God as your money. It says on that dollar bill, right? In God you trust. God, Money is God. Sure means a whole lot more, obviously, than my heart, my physical, emotional, spiritual well-being. May I get done processing this and allowed to let it go with love again soon. And for forgiveness for myself for being angry about it all. I am. I think it would be too angry about it all. I've been their victim for them to protect their doctrine and their dogma. And egos and identities and rightness. God don't like ugly. That's some ugly stuff. Everybody that I tell about that is just like horrified. Horrified that a family would treat anybody that way. Any family that would treat anybody that way. I mean, alcoholic families and stuff do better than that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Homeless on the street do better than that to each other. Anyway. That's my ramblings again this morning. Uh, Ramblin' Rose. <laughs> Ray LaRose, see you. La Bomb. You see it from up there, there. There it is. Check that out. It's just amazing. So beautiful, all the colors. And that's good for you. Um, scientists have proven looking at colorful art is good for us. So I'm doing a service. I'm in service. It may look like some people would say I'm, I'm doing nothing worthy of anything. But 
And my dad's told me that. No wonder my mom shut down. Because the core parts of her were dismissed and demonized and made unimportant. When we do that to somebody, we, we kill their spirit. Kill their spirit. I had to leave to save mine. That's a shame. I had to leave in order to not be a part of that ugly. Because the way they treat each other is pretty crappy too. Really. Even if you are part of the in group, you're always one little step away from being part of the out group. And if you don't do it just right. Cover all that stuff when you go to grandpa's. You gotta look a certain way. If he comes over, oh my gosh, hide all the alcohol bottles. Hide the cigarettes. Cover it up, make it look good. Maybe he'll leave you some money. Anyway, Dad, if you're listening, ever, I really, when I was a kid, I thought you were so innovative and you were so, like you, uh, you were curious and you, you would laugh and you had fun and you uh, seemed to love nature and I don't know where that person went. You weren't so stuck. And like if you're stuck, that's not a new wine skin. Uh, like you're still here, so obviously like God's not done with you yet. Um, I, Abraham was a lot older than you when he, and they got new wine skins and they turned from their having turned away and turned back to spirit. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know who. You, what kind? What kind of man would you have to be to do this to your daughter? To shut her out of your life and care about a building and a dead religion more than you do your living daughter. <laughs> I'm still... I'm still begging. <laughs> That's demeaning to me. <laughs> demeaning. Get some self-respect, girl. <laughs> Leave that man alone. Maybe I'll start listening to those voices again soon. <laughs> I'm here and I've got time to just focus on me. And that is a part of me that is very, very hurt. Very hurt. Very, very hurt. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right. There's part of my ritual too. Come on, be vulnerable, authentic, and share it. Share it. I'm just the good stuff. I'm authentic. Some days are really, really rough. Really rough. I am grateful. I have a roof over my head. I have money in my bank account. Like I said, it's enough to kind of mess up what I had figured out to be an approach to things. And, but I believe that spirit can take care of me. It's facing down that fear that I'll be dropped on my head this time.
<laughs> I'm going through some stuff. I have not been dropped on my head. I've been dropped. When I'm able to stay in spirit, not going to fear, there's been another learning opportunity, blessing, place to serve, where I learn a lot about just how messed up people are and how wonderful God is. Spirit is. Um, I have God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. My family don't talk about the Holy Spirit much. <laughs> My dad's admitted a Baptist church. They were actually looking at leaving the Baptist church, he said. I don't Satan may have, devil may have, he may have, like his thought forms in his head convinced him that he didn't die with mama or mama died the way she did because he was considering leaving, or my sister, <laughs> that he was considering leaving the Baptist church and exploring something that seems a bit more wild, the ones that the Pentecostals, that at least delve into the Holy Spirit a little more and do healing prayers and faith healings. And he's even admitted he knows that to be true. He's witnessed it. He wasn't able to pull it off himself, but he's witnessed it. I'd be doing things greater than these, Jesus says. If you got his spirit in you. That's how I read the book. Anyway. Peace.